welcome back everybody today we're doing our first pistons podcast um we're a long ways away from seeing too much action but we just wanted to get started talk about this young team and uh see where you guys stand as long as well as us we haven't really talked between the two of us too much about the pistons so i want to know where jared's at as far as his favorite of the young core he's probably going to figure out where i'm at so let's just get down to it all right, so we're going to talk about the young core of the Pistons today. Um, and we're going to kind of get outside the core and just talk about kind of some of the bench, the young bench players as well. But uh, let's start at the most important piece on the young core. Um, I think we both agree with this. I think that everybody agrees with this, Cade Cunningham. No doubt about it. He he kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Luka Doncic kind of style. He's not lightning fast, but he's quick and he has crazy IQ and he knows exactly where to have the ball on the court. He He's, he's going to be the future of this team. Yep. I mean, so he dominated, he dominated high school. He dominated at his boarding school in high school. He dominated in college and he had a great rookie year. His, some of his stats were only matching up with Jordan's rookie year. Um, and then lately, we've heard a lot about him in the news lately. Uh, he's been playing with the te- with the select team, same with Jalen Duran. And uh, many, many people, many beat writers have said that uh, Cade Cunningham looks like the best player on not only the select team, but the actual Team USA too, with like Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton and all of them. So it's pretty exciting stuff. I'm glad that we got him. It was kind of a toss up when uh when we found out that we had that first overall pick that year. You you'd assume that they went where they were gonna go Cunningham, but you didn't know. I'm so glad they did though. I'm glad I'm glad you said that because a lot of people say that Cade was the clear cut number one. But if you remember back, it really that was not the case. Uh Green and Mobley both were kind of looking at that number one spot and uh shout out to Koo on locked on pistons he had uh Cade's cousin on and uh he was even saying to Cade he was saying Cade like we don't like if you don't want to go one if if you don't want everything that comes with that then there's rumors that Troy likes Jalen Green too and uh they're from Texas so he could have tried to make that move to say no to Detroit and go to Houston and he wanted all that stuff that came with number one. He wanted all of it. That's what you want out of your guy, accepting the challenge. He knew what he was getting into coming into Detroit. Not that he had too much of a an option about it, but he he's really turned this team around for the better. We're trending upwards, at least. That's what you want. Oh, 100%. In that 2021 uh, draft, if I were to redraft it all over again, there's no doubt in my mind I'd pick Cade Cunningham, number one. For sure. We just got to keep him healthy. That's All right. Thing. So, yep, keep him healthy. And he just got off the surgery and he's looking great. I, dude, I think this is the year for him. I don't think he's going to be like one of those players that plays hurt all the time. I think he's going to stay healthy. And I think he's going to be very, I think he's going to be very close to being an all star this year. Very, very close, if not an all star. So he's our 1 1 guy, both of us. That's our, you got to keep him on the court. He's the, he's the key. Who, who's second to Cunningham for you? Yeah, so I think this is where a lot of the controversy comes from. Um, For me, it's pretty clear cut, and it's Jaden Ivey. Um, My reasons are, so going into last last year, everyone was saying, this kid's fast as heck, he's a leaper, you know, he's going to be a good slasher, a good cutter, all these things, but he probably won't, he probably will have a, you know, a, he probably will have to tweak his shot at the beginning. He's probably going to have to, you know, learn how to dribble a little bit better, learn how to pass, you know, do a couple of the fundamental things right. And that's pretty common from a player that's so fast and quick like him. And what did he do? He came in and blew everyone's expectations away. He did not have a mid-range of college at all. And hid in his mid-range by the end of the season was phenomenal. Not only that, but out of all of the young players that Troy has drafted besides Sadiq Bay, who's no longer on our team, uh, Jaden Ivey and besides Isaiah livers, Jaden Ivey has the best three point and he has the most attempts per game. 
and that's he's just and, a coiled spring. He he at any moment you just think he's gonna jump out of the gym. He he's a lightning rod of talent. Right. And after the first preseason game that he played, he didn't look great. But it's it was literally preseason. He had no practice run with the team. He was out, according to the media. And we we've seen so much from him from last year that you cannot count him out. He legit took over games against real competition in the NBA last year. Like no summer league. He was legit getting double teamed by the Miami Heat near the end of the season and no one could stop him. Do you think him and Cade can be like a top five uh backcourt eventually? Dude, uh, I a hundred percent. And in three years from now, I almost guarantee they're gonna be a top five backcourt in the NBA. I like that. They just got to put the pieces around them, which is going to get me to my piece number two. My, I really, I've been loving what I'm seeing out of Jalen Duran. He, he's young, super young, and he hasn't put on the most impressive show. But for being as young as he is, he's really, really dominant in the paint. Yeah, he. I mean, he was the youngest player in the NBA last year. Some people thought that he was going to play um a little bit in the G League. But uh, that lit a fire under him, and he, I mean, he is not a G League player. He is a legit NBA player. Um, a lot of NBA players have, you know, have said, like, dude, this kid is a man child. He's legit. I, what I'm hoping for is that, like you said, and you think in three years that backcourt can be a top five backcourt. In that time, if we hold on to Jalen Duran. He's got to put on size. He's still a little bit too skinny to be dominant to the point where we need him to be uh, like against the uh, other centers in the league. I think he's young. I think that he has the size and I think this I think his size is good enough. I just think that he needs to learn a little bit more on defense. Yeah, his his offense is smooth. He doesn't have too many tricks, but uh you saw in preseason, I mean, he was definitely take I mean, he hit a 3. And he was making a couple of moves. Uh, He's working on did, the mid range too. Did do you like? Did you like that he was experimenting like that in summer league, or do you think that players should like stick to more of their game in summer league? Oh no, absolutely not. Like the team knows what they need to be doing, like come the regular season. So now is the time. Not now, but preseason is the time to be working on different things that you can put in your bag. Yep, and. uh I don't have any doubt, like in my mind, I don't have any doubt that Jaden Ivey is second behind Cade with the biggest upside, but I think in order for the Pistons to be the the easiest way for them to be, to take a leap next year is for Jalen Duran to take that step on defense. And if he takes that step on defense, that's going to escalate the Pistons uh, record by many games. That's we were one of the worst things. defensive teams in the league last year, so any amount will help. Yep, I, I honestly think that if he takes the leap, that's going to be the biggest impact for the Pistons. So I would Jalen Duran be your number three? So Jalen Duran, yes, he would be my number three. All right, we'll just skip that then. Let's go to your number four. Who you got up after Jalen? All right, so number four, I have Asar Thompson. Played at OTE. OTE, I don't care what anybody says. OTE was extremely hard to watch. They had a lot of funky rules. They had a weird announcer. It a lot of times it didn't even look like basketball. So this good. this is the quote from Troy Weaver about Asar. I think Halle Berry is pretty in church or at the grocery store. So pretty much meaning Asar played he thought he played good at ote or he thought he would have played good at duke you know what i mean like yeah. it didn't matter he 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 saw his talent and uh he jumped on it he he definitely went for the upside player though i i mean that's that's a fact someone to replace killian hayes out there yeah yeah well well what do you Anybody... think about a star shot he he's mm. I wish we would have had more of a shooter because I think that's a big part of the team that we're lacking in is shooting. But I, I like his basketball IQ. I think that's the biggest upside on him. And I think he's aggressive. 
Yep. And I, I mean, there's a very good chance that he walks in and he's our best defender day one. So that's, that's going to take a lot from, that's going to take like a lot from Kate. That's going to help Kate out. It's going to help Ivy out. That's going to help Boyan out. That's going to help a lot of people out. So to that point, then Isaiah Stewart with that contract extension better be knocking down threes this year. Yeah, man. They, uh, they really like, like you heard it last year. They really wanted him to play the four. He played the four last year. He was taking about five threes per game. He was shooting, uh, just over 40% for about a month. And then he had a little bit of a, a shoulder surgery and it dropped a little bit. Um, I think he ended at about 34%. I believe in a shot. Do you believe in a shot? I do. I mean, he's over league average. So I, and we just got to trust the process there because someone was going to have to step up and start draining these things. Right. And I mean, he, I mean, some people don't like him and our fan base and some people really love him, but you can't take away the fact that he is the heart and soul of this team. He is loud. He speaks up. He plays defense. He does. I mean, he is the Ben Wallace, Dennis Rodman. He is along those lines type of player. You need He's not that. scared of anybody. I loved seeing him get in LeBron's face. That was awesome. Right. And the shot's legit. Like, the shot is legit. I hear you. All right. So moving on past Isaiah, who do you got? Who do you, who do you like as the puzzle peacemaker? All right. So let me just run through it real quick for me. And I think that we agreed on everything, but we had uh, Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran flipped. Mm-hmm. So Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Asar Thompson, Isaiah Stewart. And my next one is a little bit of a surprise for people. Um, My next one's actually Marcus Sasser. He looks legit, man. He's looking great. Dude, he had a, what, a f- I believe he had a 40, a 40 or 41 point game in summer league. Um, Missed like, he was like one for seven, I believe, in the first half and then just went absolutely off. That's what he does. He scores the ball and he plays really good defense. He, he was a great player at Houston for four years. I loved this pick at 25. I loved it. And you don't see too many of these guys do a full four year, uh, full four year binge at their college. Like usually, a lot of these guys are getting plucked out into the NBA quite early in their career. So it was good to see that he had a lot of experience playing high, uh, high level basketball. Oh yeah, it, dude. I mean, if he was four inches taller, he would have been a top ten pick easily. So yeah, what is he like six foot? Yeah, he's about. So I believe they have him at six foot one, but. My God, if he's above six foot, I'd be surprised. <laughs> All right, let's just keep him moving. Yep. All right, Isaiah Livers. All right, so he was also a four-year player in college from Michigan. This will be his third year on the Detroit Pistons. His uh, his first year, he shot it really well from the three. Um, he was a great shooter. He He's battled the injury bug his first year. Second year, he battled the injury bug even more. Um, three point percentage dropped down a bit, but we saw him do other things like dribble the ball and drive to the hoop and pass. Um, I think for him, we really got to figure out this year if he's a shooter or not. Is he a, you know, is he a 38 to 40% three point shooter or is he a 34 to 36 three point shooter? Because if he's in the 40s, he has an NBA. He'll be on an NBA roster for years and years to come. He is that type of player. Good on defense, hustles, smart. But if he doesn't have that three-point shot and he's more in that 30 to 34, then he gets shuffled with a huge group of players that sit at the end of benches and that don't make teams eventually. So I think there's a lot to figure out with him still, but the team loves him. Troy loves him, and he's definitely a part of this core as of right now. He should have, uh, he's got all the makings to have a pretty decent year here in Detroit. Uh, wanted to get into Marvin Bagley. What are you thinking about Marvin Bagley this year? Well, let me ask you this first. So, who do you like? Who would you rather want? Who would you rather want to see stay on the Pistons? Would you rather have Mar- Marvin Bagley or James Wiseman? be honest with you i didn't really uh particularly like either one of those acquisitions um i'd probably rather have bagley yeah i would too um 
I was not happy about the Sadiq Wiseman trade. Um, I thought we could have gotten more out of that, or we could have just kept him on our team. When you draft players that are de- that are decent, you have to pay them. That's part of the process, and uh, I thought we really missed out on that. And um, I don't think that Wiseman. I this is this is probably a hot take, but I don't think Wiseman will be in the league in the next four or five years he doesn't have the i was just gonna say that i was just gonna say that he's kind of phasing out already dude whenever the ball whenever the ball is in his hands the only thing that he looks at and the only thing that's in his mind is the freaking rim the net and the ball going through he doesn't look to pass he doesn't look to do anything he just looks to score he's a scoring center and that's that's obsolete now in the nba absolutely especially when you have Marvin Bagley, that's just a little bit bigger. I, I like that style of center more than I like Wiseman right now. Right. Like Marvin Bagley, he's been the – he's, you know, got him from the Kings. He's been the league now. We know he's not – he probably doesn't have much more upside than what he's doing right now, but we know what he is. He's a legit NBA player. And, I mean, I'd be damned if I saw Wiseman playing over him. This is going to take us right into your favorite player on this team. Give me a little bit about Killian Hayes. Yeah, so, I mean, he's not even a part of the young. I mean, he's definitely not part of the young core, but he's not even part of this young group anymore, in my opinion. Um, Got Monty. Um, we got a point guard in now. We got Sasser. We got Joe Harris. I mean, Killian is far, far, far back on the death chart now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was a first-round pick, correct? He was. He was number seventh overall. Troy drafted him above uh, Tyrese Halliburton, but so did uh, six other teams after that. So, Absolutely. Uh, all you hear is like, oh, why, why is Killian getting so much playing time? All I heard last year is, oh, we need him for the defensive value. I don't think he really contributes too much value to the team at all. Worst, worst shooting percentage in the NBA. He's not an NBA player. Yeah, honestly, last year at the end of it when he was starting, it to me it was a joke. I kept hearing about we gotta we gotta try to make Killian Hayes and Bogdan like a package deal. I was like, who's gonna take that? And what are we gonna get in return for that? Right. The thing is, you can't even get a second round pick for Killian Hayes. You can't get anything for him. You have to, you you're gonna have to pay to get rid of him. So I see him just getting waived at the end of the season. I hear you. You got anything else you want to add here, Jay? Nope that that about wraps it up for me. How about you? I think I'm good there. Um, I still have a lot more research to do about this team. I don't know too much about what's going on with the Pistons because I'm so focused right now on Detroit Lions. But everybody that's listening, stay tuned. The uh, The Pistons are going to have a lot of content on this channel as the uh, season approaches. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure some of you will pick up on this, but uh, Jack is more of the uh, football pro and I'm more of the uh, the basketball pro when it comes to more of like the uh, tedious analytic stuff. I'm learning though, and you're learning. You're doing pretty good here with the uh, Lions info too. So everyone yep. stay tuned, subscribe. Our Twitter is going to be right here in the description and uh, we'll catch you on the next one for the Great Lakes Sports Podcast. Yep. Peace out, guys.